How's it going guys? Continuing to build the silo this week. So I didn't film it all yesterday. They poured 12 feet and now it's Tuesday and they're pouring their last rise for the day. This will be 64 feet tall now. That's half of 128. We're going to 132 feet. So they'll be past halfway after the next ring. These guys are very efficient at getting the next form up and set up to pour. Doesn't even take them that long. They're usually done by three in the afternoon, it seems like, with three guys running three different pours a day. It's 3.30 right now, so yeah, they'll be wrapped up a little after four, I guess. It's just about 60 degrees today, so this is a lot nicer for pouring concrete. Not worrying about the uh, cold weather, freezing anything. It's gonna be warmer this week now and probably from now on, so we're happy about that. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Still working at the silo. They just got finished pouring a ring, lifting the forms now. Reaching down with a pole there to unlatch that bottom form. My dad's actually away this whole week, so I'm just keeping things going best I can. The guy who does our bale chopping was gonna be here this morning, chop up all those big square bales there. I guess they had a breakdown at their last job, so they're gonna be here this afternoon now, it sounds like, if they can get it fixed. It takes a special type of person to be willing to do that job, I think. They actually have less guys here as the silo gets taller. It gets a little bit easier because it doesn't take as much rebar. Starting to put less and less as they get higher in the silo. It's just going to be less pressure on it from the feed. So I just brought the drill out because I want to open up the curtains in the barn a little bit. It's pretty nice and warm again today. I'm just going to open the bottom curtain for the special needs a little bit and then we'll go around the barn, do some other ones. Ceiling fans kicked on today. We have those set to turn on at 50 degrees. They run kind of slow and then they speed up as you get up towards 65. I'm just gonna go around the freestall now and open the bottom curtain up a little bit. Put these mats in there because there was a gap under the curtain. It's starting to shrink a little bit. I think I could remove those now and they wouldn't be needed anymore this winter. See if I can get them out without moving the curtain. neighbor that builds them they take an army truck and use a John Deere front end and make it work a lot of new barns will have automatic controllers with thermostats on them so it'll open and close as the temperature changes and it'll adjust for wind and everything even there would definitely be an advantage to something like that because we don't adjust them enough manually it just takes time and you got to be paying attention to the weather I'm gonna take some shavings out to the calves now they need bed up
They're up to 76 feet now. They gotta pour that last form today. I was just doing some office work the last couple hours, video editing and planning for spring crops. Made some changes to our corn seed order because when we ordered corn seed in the fall, we weren't sure yet if we were gonna be building the silos. With the uprights, we're gonna want the corn a little bit drier, definitely on the bottom of them. So we're gonna grow a couple of different varieties, some shorter season stuff. I was getting that figured out this week. And then also what we're gonna do for herbicide this year might make some changes to that. I haven't heard from the guy that's going to do our hay chopping if he's going to be here today later in the afternoon. I decided I'm going to start a little bit early on the feeding in case he does show up. That way I won't be getting done real late. We're currently feeding rye out of the silo for the dry cows and the milking cows. It's in this stave silo right here. So we'll start this up. Really nice stuff coming out of the silo right now. This is what I like about uprights. If you get it in dry enough, it makes awesome feed. Very consistent, no spoilage. It smells really good. It's gonna be different this year, filling that big silo with the spring forage. Gonna need to make sure it's dry enough on the bottom. We gotta get down to around 55%. We're confident we can get there and make great feed. It's gonna take patience. Definitely gonna be a learning curve with this new silo, no question. Our new silo is going to be set up with an automatic winch instead of the hand crank. I just turned it down six times to lower the unloader a little bit. Now it's coming faster. It's going to be based on the amperage, so it'll just automatically turn it down. We can set it to 30 amps or whatever, and it'll just keep it at that exact same uh, pace all the time. It'll also be nice with the robot feeder. We're not going to be standing there waiting on it, so we can actually run the unloader a little bit slower. We kind of push it a little bit when we're having to stand here and wait. It can be harder on your unloader and your conveyors and everything. Starting with the dry cow batch. I just need to run out, get some hay and some corn silage, and we'll run it out to this barn right there. We have enough chopped hay to get us through a couple days. So even if he doesn't get here today, we'll be fine till tomorrow. Gonna deface the silage now. We still have this new Hoover direct drive shaver we're demoing. Not planning to keep it obviously because we're not even gonna be using the bunker silos after this year. Gotta enjoy this job while we can. Working on the milking cow batch now. Putting the rye in first again. Put the molasses in.
I got the feed mixed and just parked the mixer up here because it's a little bit early to run it out. Didn't hear from the bell chopper. I don't know if we're going to be chopping bells this afternoon. Probably not. I guess the hay chopper will be here tomorrow. I'm gonna run out this feed now. It is the next day. The hay chopper should be pulling in pretty soon. Kind of a nasty one today. Finished chopping all the hay. We like to get it chopped up pretty fine like this. That way the mixer doesn't have any trouble blending it with the other forages. Our mixer has knives in it, but it's not gonna cut it up this evenly. The cows will end up sorting through it. They won't always eat as much of the hay. They like to find the goodies. We try to have a consistent batch so that they're eating everything. I have my camera set up at a distance, but in between the two bays, I uh, blew this tire. Well, it, it was getting a little bit low. I had two bales of hay on, and caught the pipe I was making the turn I caught that pipe with the, the tire and it knocked it off the rim I just switched the spare on so I could keep working but got this one working I took it over the neighbor helped me reseed it I guess that's something I should be able to do myself but Hey guys, so a couple days have passed. Today is March the 1st. Usually right around the last week of February, first week of March, is when we want to spray our triticale spring forage with the first round of fertilizer. Depends on the field conditions, when we can get in and spray it. Planning to get started this morning. I have the tractor hooked up to the sprayer already. I have this one cord. If you remember, the dog had chewed through it. We had to get it repaired. I need to plug this into the GPS globe on the top and run it into the cab. We have a trailer of fertilizer sitting right there. So we can fill it up then. This 
there's the globe on the cab. This tractor has a very basic guidance system on it. We don't have auto steer or anything, but it's really nice to just have mapping so you can see where in the field we sprayed. Well, my tractor doesn't start. Started last evening without too much trouble, so I don't know. It's kind of chilly out, but not too bad. I have it plugged into the sprayer. I don't know if it was stealing a little bit of power from it. I just ran a little bit of water through the sprayer, made sure all the nozzles are working. So I'm gonna load up fertilizer. The fertilizer we're putting on is a 27004. It's a little bit of sulfur in there with the nitrogen. And then we're gonna be adding five ounces to the acre of this Extend product. We get this from Homestead Nutrition. It's calcium and some other goodies in there, whatever they put in there. Helps push the yield on the spring forage crops. This trailer's super handy, got a nice pump on it. I'll just add about two gallons of this Extend product. I'm not running any herbicide with this. We're checking the fields, there's not a lot of weed pressure. The weed that we're looking for this time of year is chickweed. There is some of that out there, but not enough to spray, I don't think. They're working again on the silo today. Haven't gotten much done the last couple days because of the weather. They're about ready to pour that top ring now. It's gonna be 84 feet. That's a job that some days would probably be really beautiful up there, and then the next day, if it's windy and cold, it's pretty miserable. Gonna be running 15 gallons per acre. 750 gallons per acre, it'll be 50 acres worth. For some reason this thing is leaking, but we'll catch it. Yeah, I guess we let that run a little too long. I'm trying to get it as full as I could, but uh, I'm gonna go rinse this tank off a little bit and then we'll go start spraying. That's turning into a problem there. That's where the concrete trucks are emptying out at the end. Should have been moving those as they build because now we got a big old mess of concrete. Yeah, we can break it up somehow, I guess. I'm gonna start right here in this field behind the bunkers. Just gonna run the sprayer a little bit on the lane, get the water out of the booms. Everything's working. I need to reset this thing. But for some reason it says I don't have GPS signal yet. But wait a minute, see if it starts working. We're gonna be spraying our spring forage crops. This is Tritical. It's a cross between wheat and rye. Planted this after the corn silage in the fall. Got a pretty thick, heavy crop. It grew already in the fall. This fertilizer is very effective at getting this stuff going in the spring. So here you can see where the triticale is lighter. This is the chickweed. Some grass there too. But we're not seeing a lot of that throughout the field. Hopefully my GPS is working now. Nope, still not working. So I switched the cord to the opposite ends. Little uh, satellite thing there just turned yellow, so that's a good sign. Thought I was going to have to run to the dealer and get a new cord or a new GPS globe or something. Oh, that didn't work out too well. It started working for a little bit and then it stopped working again, so I guess the cord is bad. I'm going to go pick up a new cord and it's just going to take an hour or something for me to drive there and get back, but that's the way it is. Just drove over to Huber's, a new cord and a used globe I can try if I need to. The fields weren't frozen anymore. I didn't get started early enough anyway. This way we gave it a little more time to dry out. Got some rain two days ago, so it's a little soft out there. I put the new cord on and we got the green satellite. I got it set to 14 and a half gallons to the acre. The GPS is definitely necessary because my sprayer runs off of this. It'll adjust the pressure to my speed on the GPS. So it's not just for field mapping. They're actually moving that next form up right now. Once they get that form set up, that'll be 88 feet, so that'll be exactly two-thirds of the silo.
I emptied out the first 1,200 gallons. They just topped it off again, and I'm filling up the sprayer. We have just over 160 acres of triticale this spring. Two full spray trailers will be enough for 15 gallons on everything. I got to keep moving because I got to feed the cows then, so hopefully I get this all done today. It'd be really nice to have it done before rain tomorrow. I'm almost done. I'm in one of the fields that the excavator with that wood chipper was in the other day. Pushed that tree line back really nicely there. Got the tractor parked. Got all the acres covered. Worked out pretty well. It's 4.15 so I need to get started feeding but it's not crazy late. Just got done pouring that last ring. I was going to film that a little bit but they're done bucketing it up I guess. Just going around with the vibrator right now. Definitely very important to vibrate that concrete. You don't want any air gaps or anything. So that's 92 feet now. Next week we'll get past 100. I'd like to get my drone out and film them while they're pouring next week at some point. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys. See you in the next one.